The Hiroshima and Nagasaki bomb blasts were equal to 15 kilotons of TNT. You remember what it did, right? It destroyed two cities, all to satisfy a man's ego. But the disaster we're going to talk about today was more like a mistake and it turned out to be the biggest mistake ever made in the history of mankind. It released gases 400 times more than the radioactive gases from the Hiroshima and Nagasaki blast, the historical disaster that baffled America's biggest enemy, the USSR. This blast is known as the Chernobyl nuclear disaster, where a small mistake led to a horrifying explosion equal to 225 tons of TNT. Welcome to another intriguing video from the Golden Mindset. Friends, the Chernobyl nuclear plant is located 100 kilometers away from Kyiv, the capital of Ukraine, in the abandoned and barren city of Pripyat. At that time, Ukraine was part of the USSR. During the Cold War era, the Soviet Union began constructing numerous nuclear power plants, and Chernobyl was one of them. This power plant was designed with four nuclear reactors, numbered 1, 2, 3, and 4. The number 4 reactor was the last one built, and it is now covered by a massive dome. Each of these four reactors had the capacity to produce 1,000 megawatts. Together, they played a crucial role in meeting half of the power demand for the Soviet Union. In simple terms, these reactors worked by heating water through a nuclear reaction. The heated water turned into steam, which powered turbines to generate electricity through rotation. However, nuclear reactions are chain reactions, meaning they can't be controlled once started. To manage this, each reactor had two 11 control rods. These rods are made of a material that absorbs neutrons produced during the nuclear reaction. Neutrons usually combine with uranium atoms to cause the reaction. But when they are absorbed by the control rods, the nuclear reaction slows down. In Chernobyl's case, the control rods were made of boron carbide with graphite tips. It's important to note that this process is operated continuously, causing the reactor temperature to reach nearly 1600 degrees Celsius, roughly 30% of the temperature of the sun's surface. To prevent overheating, it was crucial to keep the reactor cool. Water lines were used for this purpose, circulating water within the reactors with the assistance of pumps, similar to how a car engine is kept cool using a coolant. In Chernobyl, the reactors had a significant design flaw that was unknown to anyone. Unlike a car where water circulation stops when the engine is turned off, in nuclear reactors, the rotation of water should never stop, not even for a second, even if the nuclear reaction halts. This is because, even after the reaction stops, it continues to generate heat for some time. Therefore, it was essential for the water pumps to run continuously without any interruption. These water pumps were powered by electricity, and the source of this electricity was the same turbine that produced electricity for other purposes. Diesel generators were set up to provide electricity for the water pumps in case of a power failure. However, a challenge arose when the pump stopped for 60 seconds during the shift from turbine to generator power. Engineers aimed to eliminate even this brief interruption, so a safety system was implemented. The idea was that the reactor wouldn't cease generating electricity right after shutting down. Instead, the production would gradually decrease from 1000 megawatts. During this phase, the pumps would run for 60 seconds using the remaining electricity. After that, the backup generators would start automatically. While the system was installed, testing was still pending, and it was a mandatory process. The tests had been successfully completed for reactors 1, 2, and 3, with only the testing for reactor 4 remaining. On the evening of April 25, 1986, preparations were underway for a test on reactor 4. The deputy chief engineer, Anatoly Dyatlov, was overseeing the test. The previous two attempts at this test on Reactor 4 had not been successful. It is believed that the Deputy Chief Engineer was determined to ensure the success of the test that night. According to the rulebook, this test was supposed to be conducted when the nuclear reactors were providing 700 megawatts of power. However, these reactors typically produced an output of 1000 megawatts. The engineer gave orders to insert the control rods into the reactor causing the nuclear reaction to slow down. Up to that point, everything was proceeding as usual. 
Possibly more control rods were inserted than necessary, causing the power output to drop from 1000 MW to 30 MW. To boost the reactor's power output, some control rods were withdrawn, raising it from 30 to 200 MW. Further attempts to increase power involved pulling out more control rods, reducing the total number in the reactor to 8 instead of the required 211, which was a violation of the rulebook. According to regulations, there should not be fewer than 15 control rods in the reactor at any given time. As a consequence of this violation, the power began to escalate from 200 megawatts, eventually surpassing 1000 megawatts. The intense heat caused rapid evaporation of water, which was crucial for maintaining the core of the reactor cool. Simultaneously, a wave of fear swept through the control room, and the entire reactor started vibrating. The only solution to the situation was to press the emergency shutoff button, causing all the control rods to enter the nuclear reactor, halting the nuclear reaction. The engineers promptly took this action. They pressed the emergency shutoff button, but as soon as the control rods entered, the reactor exploded instantly. The recorded magnitude of the blast on the seismograph was equivalent to 225 tons of TNT. To put it in perspective, the deadly gases released by this blast were 400 times more than those released by the nuclear bomb Little Boy dropped on Hiroshima. This catastrophic event occurred at 1.26 a.m. on April 26, 1986. Now, the question arises, if the control rods were inserted to control the nuclear reaction, why did the reaction increase? The blast occurred because of the graphite used in the tips of the control rods. As mentioned earlier, the control rods were composed of boron carbide, which halts the reaction, but the graphite in the tips, on the contrary, amplifies the reaction. The reaction was already beyond limits before pressing the emergency button, and when the graphite tip entered, the tolerance level of the reactor walls reached its limit, resulting in a burst. Two engineers lost their lives on the spot, and two others suffered severe burns. Due to the blast, reactor 4 of the plant caught fire. Initially, it was perceived as a regular fire, as no one was aware that 5% of radioactive material had been released into the atmosphere due to this explosion. The firefighters arrived at the scene and attempted to put out the fire with water. However, since it was a graphite fire, it proved challenging to extinguish. Following the incident, the entire city of Pripyat, with around 50,000 residents at that time, was evacuated overnight. All residents were instructed to leave, and an emergency was declared. The Soviet Union government organized hundreds of buses to transport the city's residents to the distant city of Slavotic. Meanwhile, firefighting efforts continued in Chernobyl for the next 10 days. More than 5,000 tons of sands were dropped from helicopters to suppress the fire. After the 10-day period, the fire was finally brought under control. However, for several more days, radioactive gases continued to spread in the atmosphere. Firefighters who were involved in extinguishing the fire fell ill due to exposure to the gases, and unfortunately, some of them passed away in the following days or months. Initially, the Soviet Union aimed to keep the incident under wraps due to the ongoing Cold War, as it had the potential to embarrass the Soviet Union and tarnish their image. However, this attempt at secrecy couldn't last long. About 36 hours after the blast, on April 28, the Swedish radiation monitoring station detected a gradual increase in radiation levels in the air, and the source was identified as coming from the Ukrainian side. Consequently, the Soviet Union was compelled to disclose information about the incident to the world. Even after the fire was extinguished in Reactor 4 of Chernobyl, the danger persisted. There was a water pool beneath the reactor where radioactive material had accumulated. If not emptied promptly, the steam from this water would continue to release radioactive gases into the air. The only way to empty it was for someone to go inside and open the drain valve at the ground level of this pool. However, entering this radioactive water was an immediate life-threatening risk, and no one was willing to undertake this task. Three heroes, or rather superheroes, emerged. Mechanical engineer Alexei Anenenko, senior engineer Valery Bespalov, and shift supervisor Boris Baranov. Putting their lives at risk, they made the courageous decision to save others. These three divers entered the pool, 
opened its drains and successfully halted the reaction by emptying the water. Many referred to their mission as a suicide mission, but fortunately, all three of them emerged unharmed without any mishap. By that point, considerable damage had already occurred. Due to the blast, iodine-131 and other hazardous chemicals had spread in the air, leading to the development of thyroid cancer in thousands of people, and unfortunately, many lost their lives. The majority of those affected were individuals connected to the firefighting team and others who participated in the Operation Cleanup later on. Apart from the immediate impact, the chemicals caused significant destruction in Europe. Radioactive materials settled in the forests, turning the leaves of trees from green to red. Wherever these chemicals fell with rain, they spread in the grass of that region. Animals that consumed the affected grass also suffered greatly. In the initial four months following the disaster, 31 people died. However, due to the radiation released into the air, approximately 4,000 people died in the subsequent years. It's important to note that this is just an estimated figure, as the actual count is impossible to ascertain. Today, the general public is not permitted to visit the Chernobyl site because, even after 38 years, some radiation continues to emanate from there. This ongoing radiation is expected to persist for the next 400 years. To address this, a massive dome has been constructed and installed to cover the disaster site. The estimated cost of the dome was 3 billion US dollars, and it's designed to prevent the spread of radiation from the Chernobyl disaster for the next 100 years. What are your thoughts on this? Feel free to share your comments below. Drop a like if you found this video engaging and insightful. It won't cost you anything, but it motivates our team to keep making top quality videos for you guys every week.